We got a soup terrorist. Rainer's blowing a canister. And we're the most wanted cunts in the country. But don't you worry. Daddy's home. Everybody and welcome to the comic book burrito extra beef my name is darian my name is landon and today we got a season two to talk about uh we reviewed season one of this show about a, uh, a month ago half a month ago, half ago i don't know something like that yeah i, I say it's about it's about two two and a half months ago yeah okay that's that's a fair guess um but show in question would be the boys um we watched season two. I watched it over the last like few days, um, and I know you just finished what the finale like. Just, yeah, just like a couple minutes, ago. minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, not, yeah, not that long. Um, and so we're gonna get into it. Um, we both like season one. Um, and um, we'll see our thoughts on season two as we go on. I have the episode descriptions pulled up, so I'm gonna read through them and we'll discuss. The events of each episode as I read through it. Yeah, sounds um, good. So we'll go ahead and do that. Starting with episode one, titled "The Big Ride." Um, this episode is directed by Phil Scrichia. Um, so here we go. Mm-hmm. This is what happened. In the episode: The boys become wanted fugitives with Billy Butcher framed for Madeline Stillwell's murder. So obviously, Falk decided to not pin the blame on Butcher. Yeah. Um. While in hiding together, Huey, Campbell, Mother's Milk, M.M., and Frenchie and Kimiko learn that a superpowered terrorist with telekinetic abilities is on the loose. They attempt to inform CIA direct, Deputy Director, wait, CIA Department Director Susan Rayner, but an unknown assassin kills her. Um, okay. I guess a few things to talk about there. Um, this super terrorist, which is like a big plot this season. Yeah, super terrorists that are showing up everywhere. Mm. Um, yeah, it was um, yeah, definitely not where I thought this season would start off going. But again, it's the boys, so true. never, never gonna expect too much. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this super terrorist, I don't know what episode it is. I think it's, I think it's the second episode. You um is revealed to be, uh, Kimiko's brother. Yeah. Um, and he. He's got some like crazy powers. It's like, more than just telekinetic stuff, but like it's used in that one episode when they're in like the costume store or whatever it was, and um, like a Halloween store type looking thing. And um, he like throws all of the shelves and stuff at them. Yeah, yeah. And like brings the roof down. Yeah, that was like that was like very intense. I was like, holy, oh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, like... butcher. Obviously, um. He was like, hey, no, that's our brother. Don't shoot him. And obviously Butcher decides to go and try to shoot him anyway. Yeah, of course. I really feel like watching this again and knowing some stuff about season three, I really feel like Butcher is going to end up being the big final villain of the show. And I have to kill. I think I don't know. Because in the comics, it ends out Butcher kills everybody and including all the soups. Um, Does he kill like Huey and all that, too? I think so. Wow. I may be wrong about that. But I think it just goes and like just has to kill everybody. Um, interesting. So, so I'm interested if they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna go that route in the show, but I think they're gonna go the route that like he's trying to, and they're gonna take down Butcher, maybe in the final season. I don't know. So, so interesting. I didn't know that. Like I thought he just killed everyone, or I like, killed all the all the suits. I, well, I may be wrong. Like I said, I never finished. I just know f- from like hearing stuff. But I could be wrong. Yeah, gotcha. but I, I mean, I don't know. It's something like that. Um, but yeah. So there's that. Um, her brother's on the list. 
uh, deputy director, or not, that's not deputy director. I keep reading the department as deputy. Um, Rainer, the CIA lady who um, we saw in the first season. Um, they go to her with um, to get some information, and then her head explodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Um, how was that? We, I mean, that, I remember when I first saw that. That was like the most unexpected. Yeah, it's just like Christ Almighty. Oh, yeah, I saw that, and I was just, <laughs> I like it kind of gets you kind of sick of it. It's like, ugh. yeah. You know, like, plus, you never know like who is gonna be like who. It, if that happens and there's no one around, they're like, all right, which one of us are next? That's what he was saying. He was like, are we gonna get our, our heads are gonna explode? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's crazy. And you find out in the finale who that is. Yes. Um, which is a big part of season three, mm-hmm. kind of. Um, <laughs> kind of sort. I mean, of I mean it is, but like it becomes a bigger problem at the end of season three. Yeah, I get season four. But um, okay, continuing on. Against Huey's wishes, Frenchie contacts Butcher to lead the boys in facing the new threats. So that's right. Butcher isn't in his first episode, what at all, right? Yeah, no. Besides, at the end. Um. Yeah, I got that little sure. right there. That's yeah. kind of it. Um. Let's see. Huey and Starlight <laughs> or Annie. Um, extort Vault International Test Subject Gecko into stealing a compound V sample. This dude who um, is paid to chop, get people to chop off his own, like, parts of his body. He's such a weird... I mean, I guess you make money somehow, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, you make it, you make it somehow. Um, Homelander's power over Vault is challenged when CEO Stan Edgar has the superhero Stormfront join the Seven without his approval. When Homelander fails to intimidate Edgar, he returns to Becca's house to see his son, Ryan. The Deep joins Alistair Adana's Church of the Collective in an attempt to regain favor with the Seven. Um, okay, so that was the first episode. Let's see here at the stuff at the end we can talk about. Um, Stan Edgar, he had the, he was in the very first scene. Like first One of the first characters they show is bringing Giancarlo. Like, they know. Oh, yeah, they know. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I just want to give credit. I mean, what a performance by John Carlo. I mean, everything he's in is. I mean, I'm not shocked, but you know, I'm flattered per se. Well, <laughs> so that, that's a better word. <laughs> that's fair. Um, yeah, he did a good job, and I'm happy he was. It's a good casting. It's a lot different than he is in the books. I know that. Oh yeah, definitely. Um. So yeah, we see storm. We see uh, Stormfront show up. She's very, um, I don't know how you describe her. She's live on Instagram a lot. What it look like. Um, that's right, because every time she shows up, she has a phone in her hand, and she's, like, live in front of people. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, but she turns out she starts to be a problem for Homelander a little bit. I mean, Homelander did remember Homelander took out um I think it was the first episode because uh, what's her name Ashley Barrett is the um I think she's kind of taken over for um Stillwell and yeah, yeah. um I remember the name I was like is it Stillwell it was kind of kind of driving me nuts there I was like I was like what's their name yeah um so Ashley's taken over for uh so and Ashley tries to introduce Homelander to Blind Spot this new um. This is my favorite scene in the whole episode. And tries to introduce Homelander to this new hero who they want in the seven. It's like Daredevil. They have enhanced hearing. They're blind. They fight with like a stick. Um, yeah. And he's, he's like. Blind guy. Uh, yeah. That's he, the thing of like, that's not what. Yeah. Uh, Homelander's like, oh, that's so cool. What happens if I say do this? He claps his hands over the guy's ears, blood spraying oh, everywhere. I love it. Just another uh, useless blind guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, and, he, and then he turns around and he says, What made you think I would want a disabled person in the seven? <laughs> it's so awful to laugh at, but it's so funny. Because <laughs> you're just not, especially when you don't expect it, you know? Like, yeah. I remember I said that one scene to my grandma. Oh, yeah. She thought it was like horrible. She's like, Man, this is terrible. And I'm like, Yeah, I know. It is. But, and of course, I'm laughing, and she's like, <laughs> She. She didn't find it that funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, and then we get um Homelander trying to int- intimidate Edgar, which does not work. Edgar is a brick wall. Um. And then uh, I like that scene too. 
Oh yeah. He's telling him like you are not our most valuable asset. It's like it's like it in the comic the guy is I mean he's pretty similar to how he is in the comic. Well, I remember so, like, in the comics, bit. unless I'm thinking of a different character, he was this guy's kind of like not as assertive over control. He tries to be, but Homelander just kind of pushes him around. No, he can't. No, he's like the only guy that's like not afraid of him. He, he's pretty similar to the comic, but it's just in different ways. I don't know. It's been a while like, since I've read it. In the comic, he kind of, oh, well, he kind of does it here too, but kind of one of those like, I don't care what you think. And definitely, like, his homelander. Homelander's afraid of him. Comic. He, um, because he's like, he's just not scared of like the guy. He's not. What's what's the name again? Wait, what? You're breaking up a little bit. I uh, saw. Excuse me. What's uh, John Carlo Esposito's character's name again? I'm, I'm oh, uh, Stan Edgar. Stan Edgar. Edgar. Yeah, in the comic, he's like. He's like not afraid of Homelander, same way here, but it's it kind of go about it acts somewhat differently, but it's pretty much the same thing. But I, yeah. I don't know something about this; it feels like it's just taken up to like a whole new like level. Yeah, and you hear um during this conversation, uh, he talked. He mentions uh, Soldier Boy at one point, which was America's first like a perfect attempt at a soup, and then yeah. um. He also talk. I think he talks about that um, Frederick Vaught, the guy who um, started Vaught, was originally a German scientist. I think he had mentioned. He yeah. talks about that a little bit, um, which that's explored later on. Anyway, uh, you see Becca and Ryan, Homelander trying to be a evil dad, I guess. Um, and then deep going to that church. The church is like the part that took me a while. I was like kind of confused, but like, okay, what is this? I get it was like to get deep is like going through some kind of like rehab, but like for his reputation. Something like that. Um so you got deep at that church trying to get back in the seven. Yeah, that <laughs> I love that scene. He where uh, he does get back in it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Jesus, we well, haven't seen that. That's be season three. Um, yeah, I know. I, I can't wait for the scene. <laughs> this is kind of going in my head. I was like, I can't wait for that part. Um. Okay, and then that was episode one. Now I don't remember how we did this last time. Did we rate each episode as we went along? I think we. No, we just rated the whole season. Uh, if we if the episode was good, we say it was good. If it was bad, we we would just point it out if it was like our favorite sure. episode or not. Okay. Well, how was the Season two premiere for you. It's a it's a good opening. Um, now and then at, obviously at the end, I didn't talk about at the end. Obviously Butcher comes back and he has my fa- maybe my favorite. Scene. I might be wrong with the blind spot thing. This might be my favorite scene only because of the music, like the needle drop, and like the way he says it. when he walk Butcher walks in, he goes, um, you know, he's like, but don't you fear? And he gets he walks gets up to his face, goes, Daddy's home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a good episode. Um, now compared to the first season uh, episode one, I mean, I I know there's some kind of different ones introducing everything, and this one's like you know. Yeah, I think I think the back. first season's first episode was better, but I I, I mean, agree I, but as well. That's because it has a lot of more memorable moments. It's, well, um, a lot of it has to involve with of what you expected. Because when I first saw it, I was just told this is just a superhero show. You know, it's just like, kind of like Daredevil. You know, it's more mature. I'm like, alright. Alright, I'll look, I'll look into this. I look into yeah. it, and I, and I watch it, and then I see Robin getting plowed. Robin. He's just, yeah, Robin? <laughs> like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it blew my mind, and so yeah, especially when you're not, you don't know what to expect. It's it's a great thing, but um, I still do think the first episode of season one's better. But this is also a good, um, it's a fun episode to watch. You know, you get back into it. It's it's still fun. Yeah. Um, I agree. All right, uh, episode two: proper preparation and planning, directed by Liz Friedlander. Here we go. Um, 
Butcher arranges a deal with Colonel Grace Mallory to capture the superpowered terrorist in exchange for Mallory finding Becca's location. Yeah, so we get introduced. I don't know if she was in the first season. I don't think she was. That's my dog, if you guys hear that. Um, but um, I don't know if she was in the I don't think she was. I think she gets introduced in this season. Grace Mallory is kind of like leader of the boys in a way. She's like the one above them that they yeah. get information from. Um, and they've all worked together a lot in the past based off what they talk about in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. The boys later learn the terrorist is Kimiko's younger brother, Kinji, whom they managed to subdue. That's true. That was... Um, I think they subdued him. That was after the costume store or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. A-Train threatens to expose Annie's involvement with the boys when he awakens from his coma. Yeah, that was... <laughs> Kind of the way they revealed him was funny. Um, because you yeah. know, they showed him in a coma, and then um, they, she was in the news interview, and they were like, What if we told you he's right behind you? And he just zips. <laughs> yeah, I no, you have you seen all of season two before? Uh, yeah, you yeah. have. Yeah, um, I have not, and so that part was <laughs> it was just like super, <laughs> he's right behind you. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, a lot, there's a lot of moments in the show that like the reveals. It's not like shocking reveals, but it's moments reveals that's like make you go like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, just like roll your head like, "Oh, I can't believe they just did that." And I love how every time they're talking about like the new season, they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna go uh, beyond what we did." <laughs> like, All right, see what you uh, got. Uh, let's see here. Entry A train um threatens to expose Annie for um. Working with the boys or whatever. And also for stealing the compound V. Which I don't think she's got done yet. I think that's next episode. So I'll wait for that. Um, hang on. And then Annie counters with knowledge that he murdered Popclaw. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Homelander forces himself into the secluded facility Becca and Ryan are living in. So he can become a father figure to his son. And teach him about their powers as gods. Um, was this the episode where he um, knocked him off the roof? Or is that the next one? I don't think it was the second episode. No, yeah, it's the third one. You're right. Okay. Um, so we'll get into that in a minute. Let's see. Uh drugged by the tr- drugged by the Church of the Collective, the Deep hallucinates his gills, encouraging him to value himself. <laughs> um so yeah, we get to see the deep's gills for the first time. Yeah, that um, that was uh, I, I Oh my god, that was You know who voices better. the gills, right? Isn't it like Pat Nozzle? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I I I felt like I was about to butcher the name. I was like, I was gonna say like, yeah. a different guy. And they like sang to them. That made me so I'm uncomfortable sick. looking at them. You get more ill action in season three. And season three. <laughs> oh, glad, it, glad it gets glad it get it gets sexual. Oh, no. I think I remember. I think I remember you sending me a clip. I oh, probably did. <laughs> I don't, yeah, probably did. <laughs> Dude, um, I, I, I swear. Yeah, I definitely want to say you did now. Yeah, but um, not, the, not the gills, I forgot that. gills were kind of just... Ugh. Oh, God. It's just like, look, he touches them too. Good God. Yeah, no. Oh, they were like singing. It was funny. Oh, um, God. It's, oh, dude. I might feel it right now. I feel like I got gills. It's so gross. <laughs> Um, it's like, and it says Queen Maeve tells her ex-girlfriend Elena she fears Homelander will kill her if he finds out about their relationship. Um, yeah, getting a lot, getting a lot of Queen Maeve story starting in this season. Like, obviously, yeah, it like keeps going on. Was. Yeah. Um, now she's a lot different. I was thinking about this while I was watching it. I mean, like, characters a lot. I mean, there's some similarities, but it's a lot different than what it is in the books. Only because in the books, she's kind of like the I don't care kind of thing. Like, she's nice, but she's not really nice, and. Yeah. Um, she just kind of like hangs out, smokes and drinks. And oh. in this show, she kind of is like, and she's in the seven, but she's also kind of over it. Oh, I get and, you. So, um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I don't have much else to touch on in episode two, unless I'm forgetting something that happened. I don't I, think I, I am. No, episode two is um, it, I don't, I don't want to say filler because not. But it's, it's one of those episodes where not really nothing really important happens at the same time. Yeah. Here, let me um while we're talking, 
I'm just going to click on the episode so I can see it. So I want to make sure. Um, I mean, like, what were your thoughts, though, on, like... I mean, you know, I... I mean, again, it's just... It, it, not, it, I don't want to say this episode was really that memorable. Um, but it's... I don't know. I, I tell you what, though, I definitely love the... Um, me and you were talking about this earlier. Um, because I don't know if you want to say your hot take now or not, but you think Homelander is not that bad of a dad. Not um, a good person. He's not he's a horrible person, but he's a good dad. I mean, that shows like whenever they were at the, and this is later on, but I think it might be like the seventh episode, but whenever they're in the um the restaurant or whatever, and he's taking all those pictures of people and he knows it's Ryan and he picks up Ryan and he's like, alright, everyone move please. And he like walks out with him. And he's trying to kind of like help. I don't know. I thought he was like, he was, he had some dad qualities there. Like he was doing good, but like it's also a horrible person. <laughs> so I don't know. You're horrible, but um, can, we also I have. See, I can see your good way. In this episode, we also have um, Butcher trying to figure out where uh, Becca and Ryan are. Um, mm. to be like remembering the details from the place. You also have Kimiko trying to explain to, um, Frenchie, through um, like just writing boy. She's learning how to write. And he's trying to explain to him like that the boy is her brother. He eventually figures out in this episode. Um, we have Homelander playing catch with uh, Ryan. Let's see. Um, we meet Eagle the Archer, I think, in maybe it was this episode. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, I like yeah, Eagle the Archer. He's kind of, yeah, he's kind of like yeah, he kind of yeah. just like disappears in the show, but yeah, he does. He does, unfortunately. I love him. Though. He's funny. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we got Stormfront, um, uh, Starlight and Queen Maeve doing uh some press. And they, we get the first introduction of the quote "Girls get it done," which comes into play in the finale a little bit. Um. Oh, uh, the gills. No, go past. Okay. Um. Just making sure get the A train reveal. Train bought Prince's guitar. Um. I think that's. Almost everything, yeah. Um. Uh, what's uh, what's her name? Um, for some reason uh, Starlight. Starlight gets the compound V from Gecko in this episode too. Um. Let's see. Becca's scared about um Homelander being there trying to talk to Ryan. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think the episode ends with um them getting um Kimiko's brother. Yeah. And then um Does I, she I'm, have I'm a brother in the comics? I don't remember that. No. Okay. I don't think, well I don't know. I don't know if her backstory's ever told in the comics. At least not that I've read. But then yeah, um Butcher punches Huey in the face and says, If you ever get between me and my wife again, I'll kill you. And then he gets in. You get in the van and they leave, and that was into episode two or three. Or, yeah, wait, two. Yeah, two. Yeah, okay. um, pretty pretty alright episode. It was decent. Um, it was alright. Okay. Now another one that feels kind of filler. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was episode two. Episode three, over the hill with the swords of a thousand men, uh, directed by Steve William. Uh, Homelander pushes Ryan and using his powers, he also pushes him off a roof. Aww. Was... <laughs> <laughs> Good dad. Uh, yeah. Culminating in Ryan attacking Homelander to protect his mom. It should happen. I, you know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna argue, I'm gonna say Homelander's not a good father. Well, Do it yeah. the way Lois and Clark. <laughs> yeah. It's fair. Hey, sometimes. <laughs> So sometimes he ain't that bad. <laughs> Swear. Um, using the sample she acquired from Gecko, Annie secretly leaks that Compound V is responsible for giving superheroes the powers. I forgot about this when I rewatched it. I forgot that she leaked Compound V to the public, so it kind of surprised me. Again, yeah, it, I wasn't. I was not expecting that at all. Like, I, I, like I figured that would be something that would like never happen, but like it would be something you'd like keep trying to do, but it just ends yeah. up. Just but not... then again, but, but then by um. But Edgar has plans. Um, in place. I have a plan. He does. Yep. 
Um, he responds by sending the seven after Kimiko's brother Kenji when the police spot him. The boys attempt to bring Kenji to the CIA safe house on um they're on the boat. And uh the deep shows up, right? Uh brings the yeah. whale. Oh god. Um and they go straight through the whale. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> it left. It's so awful, but yeah. It's, um it's and then okay the set with the seven arrives so everyone shows up deep is all like hey guys what's going on and they're all like go away and feel bad for him a little bit but not really yeah. he's a rapist anyway um <laughs> yeah see so i feel, you bad, can't feel for... bad for anybody in this show you like you want to thing is this is what i feel too with butcher as well like i want to like butcher and i do like butcher but i was also he's not a good person at all he's not no and he's like, well, he's like Walter White. Butcher is, I am Butcher is the danger. <laughs> I am the oi. He's the oi. <laughs> he's the oi. Um, okay, but let's see where I'm at here. Uh, disobeying. Uh, oh yeah, the seven's arrival in uh, resulted in um, Kimiko's brother escaping. Uh, disobeying Homelander's orders. So okay, they chase them through the sewer, right? Uh, yes. and the seven do and we get Huey cornered by Starlight and Homelander and Homelander's telling her to kill him and she doesn't want to do it and um, Butcher comes in with his famous line I'm not going to repeat oh. it but <laughs> we'll say it's just oi that's what we'll say yeah. Yeah. and then um, the brother literally brings the whole like roof down on top of them I'll talk about home later. That is. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Um, just kind of looking to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, so everyone is upset about this compound V being leaked. You got Black Noir crying in the hallway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so. Uh, Black Noir is, is probably the strangest person on the team. Yeah. Hey, wait till season three. I keep saying that, oh, but like it's true because you get like you see some books, a little bit of backstory. Uh, good back, good lore. Um, it's in the first. I think. Well, maybe it's not in the first episode. It might be the first episode. It's in. Episode. It is in the first. It is in the first episode. Oh, okay, you know the so. you know the team payback in the comics. It's like they were introduced at one point. Um, and it's like Soldier Boy, and um. It's like a bunch of other superheroes. I think like Mind Droid is one of them. Tech Knight was part of the team. Oh yes. Yeah. Um. They're in the very first episode. The whole team. Besides okay. Tech Knight, I don't think he's in. Um. There's Ryan getting pushed off the roof. I'm skimming to this. Um. So yeah. Uh. Let's see here. Basically, get a chase through an apartment building. Um. Stormfronts chasing after Kimiko's brother, and Kimiko. Killing a lot of innocent people, uh, mainly minorities, and um, yeah. <laughs> uh, he gets up on the roof and um, it breaks uh, her brother's hands and then breaks his neck, I think, or something. Um, and everyone's framing her brother now for all the people's deaths. Edgar uses the destruction to argue that superheroes are necessary to prevent such incidents, while casting Compound V as the work of rogue scientists led by Stillwell. Um, so yeah, we get a little vault spin on the what's going on there. Yep. Um, I think I like this episode. Oh, yeah, I, I think did it's like too. a fun um, little like it's not like a contained story, but it's like it is, and it's, I think it's fun. Oh no, I I agree completely. Um, I don't. Know, it luckily, what's good about I say the best part about this show, it always it is there really like a I don't know if there's one episode I do not like. And I think I said it in the, um, I definitely said in the first season review. The, I, I, as far as I'm seeing, there's only like one bad episode of this show. Yeah. And, and it's that's that, it's that one. Yeah. Yeah. And not that it was a horrible one. I just, I couldn't, I, I was really annoyed by it because I was just like, holy crap, just grab this girl. <laughs> you know, it's just, it just felt like it just took forever, but I get it, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it's oh, here just we the go. First thing rather than... Yeah. 
Um, and at the end of the episode, also, um, you get Kim- Kimiko basically wants revenge on Stormfront. And then um, we cut to a little like the speech by um, Stormfront, where she's thanking everybody, and she's basically like being per- like runs cheering at her and stuff. Homelander is jealous. It's all good out. And that was in yeah, the episode. Yeah, but a really good episode. Yeah, and they released the first three episodes in one day. So that was the, yeah, end of, like, that the first day of episodes. I mean, nor- I normally, yeah, they did that with um, they did the first. No, they did the first first three, or the first two for Gen V. I can't remember. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's first three, it's first three. For oh, yeah, I forget fourth technically, right, right? Yeah, and then they also yeah. I think they do that with every boys season. It's the first three. Um, but yeah, that was episode three. Pretty good. I like it. That was a good episode. Mm-hmm. How much time oh, yeah. do you have left? Three minutes. Oh boy. Um. <laughs> hmm. No, we definitely do not have time. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't even know about this. This is kind of cool. It says Butcher, a short film, was released the day before episode four is released, where Butcher's on the run after being framed for Stillwell's murder. Butcher seeks help from his old friend Jock, only to beat him to death after Jock calls the police on him. I didn't know about that. I'm going to have to watch that. Oh, yeah. That's some more lore. Interesting. Oh, the lore. Sorry. The lore. Um, um all right. The lore run. No, <laughs> Um. Okay, Zoom hates us, so we're gonna have to call it for the moment. We'll come back and go through the next few episodes. Well, that's good. Alrighty. All right. Um. Episode four. Uh, did you watch this one today? I remember you told no. me like four episodes. I started on. Hey, well, I watched four, but like I was on. All right, today I started on like five, six, seven, okay. <laughs> and uh, finished like five through the you know last episode, which is nine. Is it nine or eight? I, mean, I keep forgetting. It's eight. It's always eight. Wait, okay. uh, That's a figure. Yeah. All right. So episode four, nothing like it in the world, is what it's titled. Uh, directed by Fred Toy. Mallory provides Butcher with information on a superhero called Liberty in Becca's location. Um, they go to North Carolina in this episode. Um, uh, pretty over that. Yeah. Um, it also starts. It starts out with interview an interview for a girlfriend for the deep. Um, which happens this episode. You get um. Kimiko. Okay, this was something I want to get your opinion on this because this kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and I get why you did it, but I don't. Um, Kimiko's crying because of her brother because they're talking about framing her brother on the news and stuff. And Frenchie goes in there and he immediately goes and tries to kiss her and she like. Throws him against the wall and then leaves. Um, or you know, she throws him against the wall and he gets out and shuts the door. And so I have it. Um, yeah, like that kind of like, why did you do that? I yeah, mean, like, I think he was trying to like maybe distra- like distract her from like what's going on, but I don't know. Uh, Frenchie's kind of kind of weird sometimes. He also did snort a bunch of stuff right before he did that, so. Yeah, so not the not the best headspace at the moment. Yeah. Um, let's see. Butcher infiltrates the facility, um, which is where Becca's being held. Becca refuses to leave because he does not accept Ryan. Yeah, so Butcher does not like Ryan. Um, which we yeah. learned about, which is because he doesn't like any soups. Oh yeah, my god. No. This episode we get introduced to the shapeshifter named Doppelganger. Um <laughs> uh, Yes. Yeah. Um First, as Madeline Stillwell, and kind of like trying to reaffirm Homelander's ego, um, which is very uncomfortable to watch. Um, hey there. We have some more. We have there. We go. Butcher and uh, Mallory giving him the thing from North Carolina about liberty. Um, we have uh, Homelander laying in doppelganger Stillwell's lap. And then it turns, they couldn't hold the form anymore, so they turned back to the dude, and he was like, turn back now. It was so, I was like, oh my god. What a, what a chat, I guess. Oh, it's just so weird. And she he turns back to Stillwell, and then he lays back down in her lap. Um, <laughs> Jesus. We get, um, um, it's my dog in the background again, if you guys hear that. 
we get uh some stuff going on between uh mm and um uh butcher i'm putting in their names for some reason like as i'm looking at it i don't know why um okay so i don't know what happened in that scene i forgot moving on though yeah. we have um homelander yeah. like about to try to kill starlight in the elevator but then she kind of says, like, I hate Huey and um, everything, too. And so he's like, he just leaves her alone and leaves. You get Black Noir wanting to look for Butcher. And so he goes into the IT lab and kind of just sits with the lady. And she also, this ties into the finale. Um, he makes her, he, she was eating an Almond Joy and he makes her throw it away. What a waste. I love Almond Joy. <laughs> well, it's because, you know, we find out in the finale, or no, seventh episode. I think. Yeah, the seventh yeah. episode. That he's got a tree nut allergy. Yeah. So he made her throw it away. Um <laughs> still foreshadowing there. Anyway, that happens. We got Huey and Starlight in the park talking. Um so in North Carolina, MM's driving. Um A train is told by Homelander that he's out in seven and that Shockwave is gonna replace him, which he was in the first season, they had a race. Yeah. Um He's mad about that. Uh, let's see. On the way to North Carolina with Huey, Starlight, and MM. Another girlfriend interview. Uh, we get a... Is it, wait, is this... Is it, no. Uh, we get um, Frenchie going to visit Sherry, who is um, this girl that... I think she was in the first season as well when Fr Frenchie was first introduced. Um, they're kind of like a... Not really a relationship. I don't know what you call it. Um, um some uh, kind of something. Um, hey, uh yeah. we get some ca we get some character backstory a little bit from uh Mother's Milk and Annie. Let's see, he tells him about his dad and how his dad basically died over a typewriter. Uh well, I don't know if that was this episode, but it's told at one point. Um yeah. well, there's that Becca and Butcher scene I talked about. Let's see, um so yeah, uh, let's see. The three of them discover that Liberty is actually Stormfront, um, who committed a racially charged murder in the in the seventies. But the lady that um, witnessed it, no one believes them. No one believes her. Um, yeah. let's see here. Oh yeah, we get Mave is Homelander just outs Mave on the news as being a lesbian. Yeah, um, saw it. Yeah, that part was crazy. Yeah. Um, I did you recognize the lady who was doing the interview? Because I, I heard her name and I was like, oh my god. No, who, who Maria is it? Maria Menounos. She's the one that shows up before like every movie in the theater. Like the oh no, is it really? Yeah, the girl out Nuvi. What's it called? Right, Nuvi. I think. Yeah, chick. That's her. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I heard the name and I was like, Are you kidding me? Anyway, Homelander knows about Elena and he's like, oh, I like it. I'm happy for you and all this stuff. Um. It's Stormfront doing another um a uh a speech or something. Kimiko's about to go up there and kill her, but Frenchie stops her. Um we're talking with the lady, MM and all them do. Um she tells them the story about liberty and all that. Um let's see. Homelander is so mad that Stormfront stealing his spotlight. And she basically doesn't care yeah pretty yeah sum it up yeah and becca shows up on the bridge with butcher and tells him that she's not leaving because he know she knows that he won't take ryan um and so basically leaves him on the bridge black noir sees that um uh, butcher is going in and out of the facility area we also have a scene with annie telling oh, okay i'm gonna skip past all this Get, Deep gets a girlfriend, and then <laughs> Doppelganger turns into Homelander and um, does some stuff to Homelander, and then Homelander kills Homelander, which is also Doppelganger. Yeah. And then that was the same episode. <laughs> what a probably the sh no, I ain't gonna say that. I was gonna say I was about to say like what the strange like this is probably the strangest episode in this season, but it was no. It, but it I think weird. episode six is weirder. Yeah, no, maybe. Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, uh, um, I was, Frenchie... I was, I was four or five just to talk, to talk about. 
<laughs> it says, um, they all Helmlander did remove A Train because A Train's having heart problems. Mm -hmm. Um, Frenchie realized his efforts to protect Kimmy Go are motivated by guilt over his past crimes, which is certainly talked about. But yeah, that was episode four. Uh, pretty good episode, I thought. I mean, yeah, I agree. Another little, like, kind of side adventure that also furthers the plot a bit. Um, yeah, episode five. Here we go. It's called We Gotta Go Now, directed by Baton Silva. Protests emerging its homelander when a video of him killing two civilian services. This was in, what happened in Africa. Um, yeah. Stormfront helps homelander regain popularity and the two enter a sexual relationship. Um, yeah. I was like, I, I saw it, I was like, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Butcher plots his retirement at his Aunt Judy's house. We, I mean, we get to see Terror in this episode. I think this might be the first time we saw Terror, his dog. Yeah, um, his first time. Yeah, isn't from the books. That was cool. Um, let's see. Uh, he finds his retirement after failing to rescue Becca, prompting Huey and Emin to intervene. Noir attacks the three when they're in that neighborhood. Uh, Butcher has Edgar call him off by threatening to release information on Ryan. Annie discovers Stormfront has been in contact with Edgar regarding the Sage Grove Psychiatric Hospital. A confrontation between Annie and Stormfront ensues over the former leaking Compound V to the public and the latter's past liberty. Maeve reveals to Elena that she's planning Homelander's downfall and recruits the Deep to assist her. Um, this is the episode where they go to the hospital. Um, we meet Lamplighter in this episode, played by the guy who played Jimmy Olsen in Smallville. Yes. Um, he also is in the new Alan Wake game. He also he played the main character in the game Quantum Break. He was played that. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, we go there. We see Love Sausage. He even said, but MM even says the name. Oh yeah. When he sees he sees him on the camera. He said, "That's a love sausage." Very very happy to see representation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it. And you'll get to he gets some lines in season three. Oh yeah. You get to see him in all of his bearded glory. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, yeah. Um, and in hero, the hero gasm episode, nonetheless. Um, oh, uh, but, um, yeah, they go there. All the inmates basically break out. Huey gets injured in this, um, gets stabbed in the car. The van rolls over. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was basically like all the big. There wasn't much that happened this episode, but it was kind of cool going to the hospital and getting to see all the people with different powers and stuff. Oh yeah, it was um, him, <laughs> MM getting choked by the love sausage. <laughs> Lord. Um, so gross. It, it's like just uncomfortable. I mean, like yeah, it, it's like I want to watch a show with like my dad because he'll think it's funny. But then there's like a part of me like, oh, I don't want to watch this with my father. <laughs> oh my god, wait a minute. The hospital's the next episode. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm hold up. I'm still on episode four. Wait, hold up, wait, hold up. Well, we just kind of reviewed episode oh. six a little bit. <laughs> oh, did we? Okay. We're on we five. Did, did... <laughs> Dude, um, we did. Dude, we won that Sausage man, that's what that's what we're here for. This is basically the love sausage review show, that's as far as we're concerned. Um, but no, I mean, five five was good. Yeah, it wasn't good. like the greatest, but it was good. Uh, six yeah. called uh called the bloody doors <laughs> off. Right. Um, infiltrating Sage Grove, MM Frenchie and Kimiko discover captive compound V patients. They recognize lamplighter, causing a scuffle to allow patients to break out. Uh, forced to work together to survive, the boys learn from Lamplighter that Vault is attempting to stabilize Compound V and adult subjects. They bring Lamplighter to Mallory, who nearly kills him for killing her grandchildren, until Frenchie convinces her to spare Lamplighter over his remorse. Stormfront tells Homelander she is the first successful Compound V subject and Vault founder Frederick Vault's widow, um, wanting him to lead soups to world domination. We find out she was a Nazi. Yeah. Um, and then she makes, him she makes him laser her... Uh, yeah, and um, that was weird. <laughs> and yeah. Maeve obtains a video of Homelander abandoning the hijacked airliner from season one that they failed to save as leverage against him. A train is lured into the Church of the Collective, and unpa unstable patient Cindy escapes Sage Grove, the uh, bald girl. She doesn't show up in season three, so she'll be back eventually. Yeah, hopefully. 
Um, well, not yeah. not fully, effective, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, episode six was good. I yeah. it. Um, I really hate Stormfront. I do too. Uh, it, it, it was like I, I don't know, the reveal on that was in, insane. I was not expecting that. Yeah. Um, episode seven, uh, titled "Butcher Baker Candlestick Maker," directed by Stefan Schwartz. Um, w title, by the way. Yes. Um, Congressman Victor- Congresswoman Victoria Newman, um, who's a new character in this season, um, schedules a hearing against Vault with Lamplighter as the chief witness. After Vault uncovers Annie's betrayal, Huey convinces Lamplighter to join him in a rescue attempt, as Annie and her mom are now trapped or being held captive, as her mom. Called Vault or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Answered their phone call. Um, and they like, I mean, yeah, they've like broke into that restaurant and beat Starlight. Black Noir beat Starlight with that pole. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. Um, let's see. Yeah, so um, Lamplighter kills himself in this episode because he's like basically like straw that they just like, took a statue away and everything. And yeah. so he just burns himself alive. <laughs> just, I mean, just as one does. Yeah, I bet. What were your thoughts on that? Kind of unexpected. Yeah, I would. Yeah, that was enough. You talk about a show that you're just. I'm telling you right now, give us to one. Of, get show this show to like the one of those people that are just like, oh, I could see stuff coming like a mile away, type mm-hmm. people. Show them this show. <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, I, you'll never hear that comment again the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, Annie escapes with the help of Maeve, who subdues Noir by shoving a almond joy in his mouth. Oh, um, yeah. as yeah, a tree nut allergy. Oh, uh, yeah. Despite the loss of Lamplighter, Butcher strong arms Vault scientist Jonah Vogelbaum, who is played by the same actor who played Carmine Falcone in Gotham. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, into testifying against Vaught. However, the hearing is attacked by the assassin who killed Rainer, ev- resulting in the deaths of Vogelbaum and many others. Everyone's heads were exploding in this scene. There were so many exploding yeah. heads. Yeah, that was like... Again, and Homelander and Stormfront were just like walking around looking at everything. There's people's heads exploding everywhere. It's crazy. It's just like out of nowhere, too. Is that... Yeah. It's just, you're never expecting it. It's like, I think that's what's kind of crazy. What's kind of funny about it. It's just like, you know, like Christ Almighty, like you just had this happen not too long ago. What in the world's going on? Yeah. Um yeah, okay. Um meanwhile Homelander and Stormfront manipulate Ryan into leaving Becca. They basically fly him up in the air and show him that everything around him isn't real. All the stuff that um he's been living around. And so he goes off with Homelander and then which was like crazy. Um a train grows suspicious at the Church of the Collective. Maeve and Elena break up over the former, failing to save the airliner. Um, yeah, the Church of the Collective is weird. They always want, I mean, you want a fresca? You want a fresca? <laughs> like, they offer literally, like, I don't know what it is with the frescoes. I feel like it's some kind of like mind controlling thing. I mean, they never really explain it. But... It, it, it. It has to be. It's just weird. Like yeah. a fresca out of all things. Um,. But yeah, that was episode seven. I'm probably missing some stuff in there. I'm trying to think. Um, so let's watch this last night. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm missing really anything there. Um, uh, big. Yeah, that was episode seven. I liked episode seven. I do like episode seven. I agree. A lot of crazy stuff that happened. Then episode eight, the finale called What I Know, directed by Alex Graves. Learning from Becca about Ryan's capture, Butcher makes a deal with Edgar to help Vault reclaim him at Homelander's cabin. Basically, the deal was, I get Becca back, and you guys can have Ryan. Um, but however, Butcher... Um, re- whatever that word. He goes back on his deal and attempts to save Becca and Ryan from Stormfront. When Stormfront attacks his mother, Ryan cripples her with his eye lasers. Seven at the end of the episode. It's kind of going out of order here, but we're going to talk about it. Um, yeah. Basically, Ryan cuts her legs and one of her arms off, burns Stormfront alive, but accidentally kills his mom in the process. Um, this episode, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, every time I watch it, which has been like three times now, I cry every time. I don't cry hard, but okay. it's like a couple, couple of tears. I mean, it's it's really sad. I mean, it's a 
you're talking about like good. At, this show is good with emotions too. Like you know, like you'd be you guys surprised because of all the stuff that's in it. But like, there's times where it makes me like get like have you know feels. I guess I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, it, I mean, I don't know. It works though. It, it got Were me. Were you expecting little... them to kill Becca? Uh, in some ways, yes. I was just like, I, I, I don't know. You ever tell you just look at someone you're like, yes, character is not going to be around long. Yeah. I look at her and that's how I felt. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah. It says Butcher Butcher forgives Ryan after the boy takes his side over Homelander. I'm going to go back a minute because um, this is skipping some stuff from what I'm reading. Um, we basically have uh, Stormfront trying to get um, and Homelander trying to get Ryan to use his powers. It wasn't working. Um, Stormfront goes on this crazy speech about how people are after them to kill all of them because of the color of their skin. <laughs> that was crazy. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe this. She's so racist. Um and um basically they Homelander is talking to Ryan inside uh, at one point and um they set off uh the boys set off a bunch of speakers, really loud um speakers to um hurt their hearing basically and butcher and becca go in they get ryan they run um at that point vault shows up into the cabin and homelander shows up to then and he wants to know he says where's my son he kills one of them and screams where's it? i i don't know i really love anthony stars acting it's homelander oh yeah and then, yeah he's talking about like you know everybody talks about like perfect casting and all that and well you know yeah it was great casting. I, I you really look at like Anthony Star acts facial like movements. Like watch his like mouth and like his like muscles and stuff. You can see like he's acting through that. Like you can see when he's angry, but he's trying not to be angry. And yeah. like like this is like different like small little things. It's really good. Uh... Yeah. Um and then uh I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. Um they're going to escape, right? Um, Butcher says, Be- you, Becca and Ryan, MM, you take them and run. Um, I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to try to take out home. I think he's going to go take out home later. Um, he's going to try to. Um, let's see. Yeah, way, I guess, so uh... the, yeah, so then MM, Becca, and Ryan are driving down the road, and Stormfront drops down, throws their vehicle, right? Um, yeah. At this point, I thought, Somebody was dead when I first watched this. Oh yeah, I did too. Um, which was um, this was a crazy moment. Everyone's running after them. Butcher runs over there, but everyone's fine. Um, he takes Becca and Ryan and runs. MM goes to fight. Stormfront's basically taking all their butts, and she has a thing. She was like, "Everyone loves me. They just don't like the word Nazi." That's um, <laughs> her. That's a... oh, Okay, okay, I understand. <laughs> Um, and then they got a whole fight going on. Then Nico goes up to try to fight her. Um, gets her neck broken. And uh, did you think that? Did you take into account that she had a healing uh, factor? I, I thought. So you thought like it was over. Yeah, I was just like, oh my god! <laughs> like, I kind of giggled a bit. I'll be honest with you, because just the way it happened, just boom. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that happened. Uh, but she's got the healing factor. Maeve shows up. That was out of nowhere, right? Yeah. Um, I remember I got kind of hyped when that happened when I first watched it. Um, they so you got Maeve, Starlight, and Kimiko, and they're all basically like beating on Stormfront. I was so hyped this whole time. I was like, yes, there are more. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, that was cool. They and she flies off. She's all beaten stuff. Um, and then let's see. Um, so we go back to Butcher and them in the woods. Um, they're running. Stormfront, obviously, the Stormfront's trying to kill Becca. Um, Butcher's trying to stop her, but it's not working. That's when the laser eyes from Ryan happen. Kills his mom, and uh, Stormfront doesn't die. Um, she has not died yet. She's still alive in season three, but she's in a hospital. Yes. Um, and let's see. Um, but Becca's like last words were saying that Ryan's good. It's not his fault. Uh, I'm making sure he knows that and all that. Butcher looks like 
He's mad. Dude just like wants to kill Ryan. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then that's that's the, this is the episode where I I texted you and I said that uh, Butcher's got a scene <laughs> where it's just like acting is like great. It's the scene when he sees Becca oh, yeah. like dying, and he's like caught oh, yeah. screaming for help and trying to get. It's so good. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I caught. Carl Urban, right? That's the actor's name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell you what, Johnny like one Cage. of them. Like what? I forget he is gonna be Johnny Cage, isn't he? Yep, an old Johnny he's Cage. One of like the most underrated actors, like ever. I he think, is. Anyway. He, I think he'd be a great like. Um, like I don't know. I thought he'd be good as like Kano in a Mortal Kombat movie, but they cast somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't know, I feel yeah, like well, he's he's, I, I feel like more sense than Johnny Cage, but, but whatever. Yeah. Um but um in the woods, let's see, yeah. Um Homelander shows up covered in blood. He killed all of those officers. And he's trying to get Ryan to come with him, even though he's mad that Ryan killed Stormfront. And Ryan stands behind Butcher. Uh Homelander gets ready to go kill Butcher, but then Maeve shows up and says, If you do that, I'm gonna leak this video of the plane and stuff. And he gets mad. Um and he basically flies off. Um, I think he, yeah, he flies. I think he flies off, and then everyone leaves. He goes their separate ways and stuff. Um, the end of the episode has Butcher sending Ryan with Mallory, and um, he has that line. He's like, "Remember what I told you, right?" And he's like, "Don't be it." <laughs> um, <laughs> that was words to live by from William Butcher. Um. Aww. And then, so they send him off. Um, let's see. Uh, we got Huey um, said that he's going to go off and do his own thing. So he goes and leaves the boys. Um, and he goes and he's working with um, Congresswoman Newman, Victoria Newman, who, turns out, is the assassin that's been blowing people's heads off. Yeah. Um, and she just like has, she killed, uh, what's his name? Alistair Adon or something. I'm trying to see right here. Butcher gives the boy blah blah. Uh, Nazis, uh, Stormfront Nazis plan leak. Last leak, Edgar halts his plan to sell Compound V as the boys are cleared of all charges and Annie is reinstated into the Seven. Um, Alistair also has A Train rejoin the Seven, but not the Deep before the assassin kills him. The Deep got mad. Crew Fresca and he's left. He's right. Fresca. Um, <laughs> And the CIA takes Ryan in. Huey gets a new job, unaware that she Newman is the assassin. And that's the end of the season. Um, good season. Yeah. I know we were before we recorded. I was saying I think I like season one better, but I will say after talking about it, uh, season two has love sausage in it. Exactly. And season that's one does a, not. That's reason enough to. I, 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 the the part where it wraps around his neck <laughs> is yeah. so disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like again, it's one of those things. I want to watch this with my dad because I know he'd like it, <laughs> but <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you definitely want to watch here. Yeah, something else to really say. Um. Here, oh, yeah, I, I I really uh, yeah, like I season two. So, I more. Yeah, I still didn't um, watch that episode. It's not like what the comic was like. It's very dialed down. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's not. Um, but but I'm already just straight away from the comic in the show because it's just it's just uh, almost completely different. Yeah, like Stormfront's not even really that big of a thing in the comics. Hmm. Um. But um, anyway, yeah, I, I enjoyed season two. I think season two is better than season one. I think it gets better as it goes on. A lot of people don't agree with that, but a lot of people do. I've read that. Um, a lot of people, I know the biggest complaint with the next season is that the finale kind of is not like the craziest thing. I mean, it's crazy, but like. It, well, I, I don't think a finale to a season has to go crazy. As long as it... Well, they say they said that the season three finale kind of goes flat. But I th- <clears throat> Excuse me. I thought it was a fun finale. I thought it was crazy. There's a lot of stuff that happens in it. But I mean, next season, obviously, you what you got to look forward to, Hero Chasm, as I said. Um, yeah. You got Soldier Boy, The Vengeance and Eccles. 
Um, I mean, you got some origin stories, different characters going to be popping up in there. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I really like season three. I think it's really good. Yeah. Um, I, I, when will we uh, be talking about that one? I just, um, all right. Let me look right now. Let's see. So next week, um, before we get to the ratings of this season, next week we're going to be talking about Spider-Man, and PS4, and Miles Morales, those games. And then the next week after that will be Spider-Man 2. And then I do have a wheel movie posted after that, but if you want, we can swap The Boys Season 3 with the wheel movie because that would have been the week after that. Let's do that. Okay, so then it'll be after our Spider-Man 2 review. The next week after that, we'll do The Boys Season 3. And then yeah, I guess can. we'll I guess we'll wait. I guess by that time Gen V will be basically over. Yeah, yeah it'll be over by then. So we're just on a boys and Spider Man game marathon right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um and then immediately after the wheel movie, that's a week after the boys, we have the Marvels, and then we're a break, and then we're into some game award stuff, Aquaman, and that's it for the year. Yeah. Good year. Yeah. Um but the boys season two. Um, what we rating it? Uh, I'm thinking. I'm trying to think. Whole season I, I, overall, I, I, the story, main story. Last one. I can't remember what we read the last one. The part wants to say we gave it a nine. I don't know if that's right. Also, it was like an eight or a nine, right around that area. Um, I honestly. I mean, I. I don't really have any reason to give it like a an eight point five. I probably would rather give it like a nine. Yeah. Cause I don't really know much there's not that much wrong with it to me. I mean I thought the story was fun. Acting was great. Characters were yeah. fun. Um had the introduction of Kimiko and Frenchie's relationship. They're like bond and that's like one of my favorite parts of the whole show. There's an episode in season three that was just so awesome with them too. Um, oh yeah. But I really do have the sinking suspicion that in season four somebody huge is somebody big is gonna die. And I really feel like it's gonna be one of the boys. Yeah, uh, if you had to take a guess, who would it be? Frenchie or Kimiko. They're building up their relationship a lot. And the best plot is to take it away. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you're reading not watching and kills them. Anyway. Um, hey, I'm, reading, I'm reading a bunch of Nightwatch and Kills right now. Um, but yes, um, that is what I'm probably going to grade it. So a nine. Okay. A nine. Yeah, nine. I'll uh, I'll go with a nine as well. All right, there's a all around good show. I mean, the boys continues to be um among the list of peak superhero television. Yeah, um, the, the very the, exclusive club. I mean, you think? I mean, you think? They, I mean, you think it gets the best? Um, I mean, you think it's the best superhero show? I think it's the. I think it's the best. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's probably it's the right. most well made out of all of them. I think. I mean, More like you can that. tell, there's t- like the VFX. I don't think there's been any VFX that have like missed in this show. They take their time to work on. Excuse me. They take the time to work on stuff. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, but yeah, there's I, a. I know you're a. Because uh... the only only superhero shows I've seen have are like the or like MCU shows and all that. But like I know you've seen Smallville, Arrow, Since Flash. Smallville, all... Arrow. Yeah, yeah, I've seen all those shows. Um, and I think this is the best one. This is like it's grounded, but it's also like not. And it's really it's like grounded, but whimsical stuff added into it. Like the powers and different things to the point where it's like cool looking. Like, I, don't know, I like yeah, seeing I all the powers get used in the show and stuff. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. But yeah, there's uh, The Boys season two. Very good. Very good. Ready for season three when you're going to get your socks blown off by Jensen Ackles. Oh, sure. Uh, and a super powered gerbil that can fly. Well, anyway. Uh, uh, <laughs> <I'll>... <laughs> um,. But with that, though, um, 
I guess we go ahead and get ready to get out of here. Yep. Um, like I said, next week is our Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, reviews. We're going to be replaying those games and talking about them. Um, and then the week after that will be Spider-Man 2. You guys definitely want to check out that. Um, also, don't forget to check out um, our 100th episode, which we did last week. We live streamed that. And um, we're also doing our 101, our episode 101, 101st. Yeah, 101st episode. So I was trying yeah, to say. Um, I almost said 101. Ooh. <laughs> um, no, but 101st yeah, no. episode will be, um, we're in triple digits now. Um, that'll be on uh, Sunday, Monday. But yeah, I guess we can go ahead and get ready, get ready to get out of here. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. See ya. Real heroes don't use drugs.